Hi, I'm Casey Duckering. I'm a PhD student at the University of Chicago. I'll be presenting um, virtualized logical qubits, a 2.5 dimensional architecture for error corrected quantum computing. This is joint work with Jonathan Baker um, in collaboration with Professor David Schuster and my advisor, Professor Fred Chong. So currently, um, we are in the NISC era of quantum computing with noisy, um, small devices that are may become useful for some things, um, but the long-term goal for quantum computing is to reach fault tolerance, where we need millions of qubits to perform um, well-known algorithms like Shor's and Grover's algorithm. Um, while this is still a bit far out, um, we need to be considering potential architectures for these um, systems now so we can start developing the technology that we need for those. So there's many challenges to scaling up these systems to millions of qubits. So for this talk, I'll be focusing on superconducting qubits um, in a dilution refrigerator. And there's some main issues with these things, scaling them up. Um, so, so such as crosstalk error, um, whereas, which is error between qubits that are near each other. Um, you have many control wires that you have to engineer and fit into this refrigerator. And you also have things like fabrication consistency of many, many qubits on a silicon device. So for this talk, we'll present an architecture that attempts to sidestep um, many of these issues or reduce their effect um, through architect architecture design. So there's many approaches to this um, that have been discussed in the past. Um, and it can be boiled down to two main ideas. So modular devices, where you have many small, easy to build devices connected by interconnects. Or there's the, um, like a classical route where you take um, memory separate from compute and you have a bus to shuttle from between memory and compute. Um, in this work, we look at um, qubit local memory technology and that's actually well suited for this and show the um, unique um, characteristics of quantum computing are um, well suited, particularly because quantum computing computes in place on qubits stored in physical devices. Um, and we'll adapt um, a state-of-the-art 2D error correction code called the surface code into this sort of 2.5 dimensional architecture where the third dimension is the index in this memory. Um, so now I'll go into a little bit of background on error correction and this technology before I get into how we do the actual architecture. All right, so for quantum error correction in superconducting devices, you have this grid of transmons here on the right, and these lines between them indicate actual connections between them that allow operations, two qubit operations on two of those qubits. Um, and we use this grid um, because this layout is well suited for the surface code error correction, although there's many other codes. So to do error correction, um, you do these parity checks shown in these as these colored boxes. Um, and so nine of these data qubits shown here um, represent a single logical qubit. Um, and so just as an aside, um, there's two types of parity checks, phase and bit flip parity checks. Um, in classical computing, you'd only have to check for bit flip errors. Um, but this is 2D because each dimension checks for one of those error types. Um, here's um, a picture of a representation of a single qubit state. Um, the classical zero and one states on the top and bottom, and a quantum state is anywhere on the surface of the sphere. So bit flip flips between the top and bottom by rotating around the x-axis, um, but a phase flip rotates around the z-axis, um, which wouldn't have an effect on a classical state, but does uh, if there's quantum information stored. So the way you perform operations on these systems are by performing many unreliable operations on data qubits to do reliable operations on the logical qubit. 
and you perform error correction periodically to keep errors from accumulating um, over time. To do two qubit gates to actually perform computation, um, there's methods, existing methods called like braiding or lattice surgery. And we use these also, um, but then show some additional operations that our architecture shows. So the technology that we take advantage of in this work um, is superconducting cavity technology, although any similar um, technology would also work. Um, so this is where you have a cavity that can store photons um, with quantum information. So you can store, and we say about um, 10 qubits per cavity, and this transmon qubit at the top can randomly access any of the qubits inside to load, store, or do a two-qubit operation. And the advantage of this is that you have a single set of control lines to this transmon to control all the qubits in the cavity. Um, and stored qubits last um, around 10 times longer um, in this cavity. So now I'll get into the actual architecture of this. So we take this 2D grid that I showed before, and we cut up all the different logical qubits and layer them into these memories spread across them like this. So this basically virtualizes these physical addresses in this working memory on top into the storage below. So um, this gives like a physical virtual address separation. Um, and then we would use the transmons to load a certain logical qubit and apply error correction or compute. And we need to periodically load all of them to um, correct for any errors they had during storage, um, just like a DRAM refresh or something like that. So this architecture saves um, around 10x um, transmons, but it turns out that there's actually some other benefits that we get because of this layered layout instead of another layout that we might have chosen. So because we now have a stacks of these um, logical qubits, we can now load one of them to the top, and then since they're parallel to each other, we can perform transversal operations like this logical CNOT, where we do a two qubit gate between these two qubits directly and without having to use lattice surgery or braiding, um, which involve turning on and off um, parity checks. So this is not possible in 2D because this connection between all the corresponding data qubits isn't possible. Um, and it's six times faster because it takes six time steps to do this um, otherwise. Um, with lattice surgery, it looks something like this, just as for comparison. Um, where you have to turn on and off these parity checks. Um, but don't worry about understanding this bit. Okay, so finally, um, we'll get to evaluation. So we're, while we're comparing our architecture, um, a couple variants of it that we look at in the paper um, versus this baseline with 10 times more qubits. So for errors, we assume depolarizing error, which is a good approximation of real errors. It's actually a worst case, um, but we do not assume that there's correlated errors. We assume all errors are independent. Um, and we perform two million simulated tri trials per data point um, in order to compute the um, low logical errors that we achieve. Um, and for more details about this, you can check out um, our GitHub repository with um, more documentation. So um, these are our threshold um, evaluation plots. So the key takeaway of this is that um, they show that our architecture does work for error correction, just like the baseline. Um, but to read this, I mean, basically, the x-axis is the physical error rate of the device, and we combine all the different parameters the device has and into one, a single error parameter so that we can get a, find a single threshold to plot. And then the y-axis here is the logical error rate you achieve with different distances of code. The code I showed before was distance 3. If you increase it 
the size of it, you can distance five and so on. So um, the threshold here is when increasing the code distance actually decreases logical error, meaning that the code distance helps instead of hurts because you're performing more operations to do the error correction, but it's there's more redundancy, so you actually get benefit. And the thresholds are all essentially the same here. So that's good. That means that the overhead of loading and storing from memory and being and being left in memory for a long period of time is not um, very detrimental to the code performance. The other thing to look at here is the slope of these curves. So a steeper slope means that the code is better when as you decrease your physical error rate you get a faster decrease in the logical error rate. So for our main variant um, or basic variant it gets almost the same slope as our baseline. The others get slightly um, shallower slopes because of the overhead of extra gates to load and store, um, but not actually much um, lower. So we don't, you only need to have hardware that's slightly better than the baseline hardware. Um, but this is actually um, easier to do because you now have 10 times fewer transmons to tune and worry about crosstalk with. So in conclusion, um, re realizable quantum error correction protocols are a critical step in the path towards fault tolerant quantum computation. Um, so we set out to exploit exploit this memory in the 2.5D architecture, um, and we showed that we get a um, compact scale of architecture, and also get some nice extra benefits um, in terms of speed and data locality um, from that. Um, some downsides to point out are that this memory technology is relatively new. It's been shown, it's been proven um, by David Schuster, um, but there's still a lot of work to do to improve it to levels of current air, current um, superconducting devices are, um, but it's just a few years behind those. Uh, and you serialize operations by a factor of 10 but this is just a fact, uh, an artifact of using memory. Um, so, but because we use memory, we get a 10x increase in lifetime. So the only effect is that your program takes 10 times longer to run. But for quantum computers, the biggest uh, metric is the ratio of how of your of how many operations you can do total before you um, error overtakes your um, values. So the benefits we get though are we get this huge reduction in hardware complexity. We have 10 times fewer transmons and control hardware and control wires and all that. Um, and we get faster execution via the transversal CNOT I showed. And it turns out that this gives us a um, 1.22 times speed up in magic state distillation. Um, for error corrected um, algorithms this is the major cost of any algorithm execution is generating t-states. So this is a this is a big win. Um, final thing is that just higher data locality means that there's less communication congestion and this third dimension and the transversal CNOT gives us the ability to do more operations with less communication. Um, and so we hope this work motivates further experimental efforts and prompts industry to adopt and scale up this architecture. Um, and the smallest proof of concept of this that can give you 10 logical qubits requires only 11 transmons with nine cavities. Thanks for watching.